Here are some samples of three-dimensional environments that I have managed to create using this new Gaussian splatting technique. It's very hot topic right now in the field of computer graphics, but there are a lot of mathematical concepts and scientific jargon around it. So it can be difficult to understand what this new 3D form is and what it isn't. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again. Since my previous video review on this topic got a lot of attention and raised a good discussion, I decided to continue and make a small summary of where this technology is going at the moment. I think it's good to understand the principles of what this technology means in practice and what it can really be used for. 3D Gaussian splatting is not a well-defined term, but it generally relates to computer graphics and 3D graphics rendering. Its starting point is in a photogrammetry method that uses digital photograph of real objects or environments as a source. Objects are scanned with a camera by taking as clear pictures as possible from all different angles. The differences between these images are then calculated by computer vision so that the three-dimensional point cloud is formed. All 3D scanning and making of a 3D model with capturing method is based on these 3D point clouds. The typical route to make a 3D model from here is to create surface structure by generating a geometry between these points. Connecting the points together with edge lines forms a polygons, and this polygon structure can then be covered with textures that are captured from those original images where the point cloud was also generated. This is how we make 3D surface models, and they can be used in Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D or all 3D programs that are available today. But 3D Gaussian splatting is not a surface model. It is not made from polygons and it doesn't have any kind of a texture in this sense. To understand this, we need to go back to the 3D point cloud phase and see how else we can create 3D shapes from these points. We need to think these points as a volumetric model. And here we inevitably came across the concept of nerve. Neural radiance field is a function that describes the radiance properties at each point in the volume. The model trains this field using a neural network and can then render 3D views or perspectives from different angles and positions. But this deep learning method can be very heavy and training each point from the volume with the neural network is slow. And to facilitate this, the Gaussian splatting method has now been developed. Gaussian splatting does not utilize deep learning methods. It is a traditional and computational technique that employs mathematical formulas and kernel functions for visualizing point clouds in 3D space. One way to do this is by projecting points onto the screen plane and using a spots and ellipse-shaped splats to smooth the projected dots into pixels. This optimized rasterizationing method creates a smoother and visually appealing view compared to simply rendering the point cloud. It is much faster and it starts to look very similar to the original image from which it was created. So what can these 3D renderings be used for then? Can I make a Gaussian splatting model and 3D print it? Well, no. Gaussian splatting is not a 3D printable model. You will need to take it back to the point cloud level and start to generate a surface model out of it, as shown before. And in the process it will lose all these transparent and reflective qualities that it can be shown in the visualization mode. 
So, we need to understand that Gaussian splatting is made for computer screens. It works very well on all kind of monitors, like in virtual reality headset. And VR will certainly be the area of use where this technology will make a big revolution. And I'm absolutely sure that this will also be a big deal in virtual production, where real-time 3D graphics are run on large LED screens and which are currently used a lot in studio productions of films and TV series. One of these interesting services in the web is Volinga, which already offers the use of Nerf-based models in Unreal Game Engine and therefore in virtual production. It's only a matter of time when Volinga also implements these Gaussian splatting models in their services. When discussing game engines, some developers have already created plugins enabling the use of Gaussian splatting within these engines. The Unity system already has its own, which can be found on GitHub, and the plugin for Unreal is still under development at the time of making this video. Japanese developer Genji Azaba has published promising videos on social media where Gosun's bladding is already running in the Unreal game engine. And at the same time that I myself have been generating these static environments, the British studio Infinity Realities has developed enormously interesting things around the Gosun's bladding technique. For example, they have experiments with lightning sequences and movement scanning data, where sequences of a moving characters can be presented through 3D cautions. This is a very fascinating development work that I recommend to follow. I'll put links to all of these in the description. So, this technology is now moving at a fast pace and it feels like it's taking a huge leaps every day. It will be very interesting to see what kind of an application will be released in the upcoming months. What do you think about this technology? Leave your comment and if you like this video hit the like button. In the meantime I'll continue to practice and do my own research on this course and splatting. See you in next time. Goodbye. <laughs>